Welcome to the BioBalance HealthCast, episode number 281, Erectile Dysfunction and Heart Attacks. BioBalance HealthCast features conversations about positive aging. Your hosts are Dr. Kathy Maupin, Medical Director of BioBalance Health and a leading expert in treating symptoms of aging, and Brett Newcomb, a licensed professional counselor. Dr. Maupin and Brett are the authors of The Secret Female Hormone, the seminal work about hormone replacement therapy for women, which is available on Amazon or from Dr. Maupin's office at BioBalance Health. Dr. Maupin's office is currently accepting new patients. Erectile dysfunction, ED, ED drugs. They're so much a part of the vernacular now. Well, certainly... uh, the the drugs for men uh, in order to improve or enhance their sexual performance. But the issue is larger than that, if I, to coin a phrase. Yes, yes. And current research is really beginning to show that we're worrying about the wrong thing or not enough things when we talk about erectile dysfunction. Obviously, there is a concern about the functionality of the erection, the size of the erection, the ability to have sex with an erection. But the data is beginning to come in pretty aggressively Mm -hmm. that erectile dysfunction is a precursor symptom to cardio issues uh, by a predictive factor of four to seven years Mm -hmm. that if you're in your 50s and 60s and you start to have erectile dysfunction, then there's a warning that four to seven years down the road, you're pretty more likely to have uh, cardio issues. So we want to talk about that today. We want to talk about it in terms of saying to the informed consumer, if you know these things about erectile dysfunction that we're going to share with you today, then if you go to the doctor and the doctor hopefully will ask you, hey, are, how are you doing with that issue in your life? As part of just a general uh quest for information about your lifestyle and your health issues and more than what brought you to the office today. They should ask you those kind of things because that's information, that's an alarm that'll go off, Mm -hmm. that should go off if the doctor is current on his information Mm -hmm. to say, let's have some cardio tests run. Right. I mean, when doctors, when you go into a family doctor or or a internal medicine doctor, Mm -hmm. they go through what's called a review of systems, you know. Are, are you having trouble seeing? Are your eyes dry? Do you have dry mouth? Do you have trouble? Do you have a cough? Are you having trouble breathing? It should be in there. That checklist. In that checklist because all of those symptoms that they're asking about <clears throat> are signs or symptoms that mean something else is going on. They're not asking you because they just are friendly. They're asking you because each one of those symptoms leads them to look at look for an illness or a disease. Mm -hmm. So when... So it's part of the diagnostic process. Right. So, But if you go in for the primary reason, let's talk about the primary reason you go to your doctor. I'm here for my flu shot. I haven't seen you in a year, and so i got to get my flu shot. And you say to me, well, let me ask you some questions over. How's it been this year? Have you had Mm -hmm. any issues? And, and of course, being male, I'm going to say, no, I don't think so. Yeah, because you never Doesn't say stuff like that. You have to, to ask it. a specific question if you're the doctor. But what if you go to the doctor and say, you know, I'm having trouble getting an erection. I'd like some of that Viagra. And so, in fact, they all, almost don't say I like some that, that they have trouble. They just say, you know, that Viagra stuff, I'd like some. Yeah. And doctors aren't all comfortable talking about sex. That so they, me. I know, because they, we're nerds. They pick us from the nerd pool. And the nurse. So the nurse don't know anything about sex. Not usually. I mean, not the guys I went to medical school with. I mean, maybe it's changed. And my daughter's not a nerd, so you know, and she's a doctor, so maybe it's different. But Hopefully. but doctors yeah. my age in my age group, and for the ten or fifteen years after, we are all nerds, and we didn't have. I had a good social life, normal, and but not everybody did. In mm-hmm. fact, that that was an issue. But that means they're not going to go. Oh, so how's it going? And. You know, how long do you have an erection? And, you know, they feel kind of nervous or embarrassed. So what what we want you to know is that if you go to the doctor with that problem, that you should expect more than a prescription to say, here, it's like take an aspirin. Here, take this Viagra. See if it helps. That's not everything. 
that could be what you want, but it, to the doctor, it should ring a bell. It should make that doctor go, wait a second. Well, you didn't have it last year. You have it this year. Not being a medical person, if I go to the doctor and say, you know what, I'm concerned about my performance uh -huh. and I've heard about these drugs and I'd like to try one of these uh -huh. drugs. I'm thinking about just one thing. Can I have sex the way that I want to have sex? The doctor should hear Has that question different. and think about my blood pressure, uh -huh. should think about my cholesterol, uh -huh. should think about my weight, uh -huh. should think about diabetes, should uh -huh. think about heart issues. And testosterone levels. And testosterone levels. So they should check those things out to find out, but not just to, here's a cream, put this on, but to say, <laughs> why is this happening? Right. I mean, it is. it should ring that bell. And every time my patients as a gynecologist would come in and say, oh, my husband has ED. And as a gynecologist, I used to say, because I knew it wasn't happening, he needs to go to his doctor and ask for a cardiac workup. Right. Because something that all of a sudden happens, you know, at that time I didn't know a lot about testosterone. Now I would say he needs to go to his doctor for a full workup, including a cardiac workup, and he needs to get his testosterone tested and come to me if it's low. Mm -hmm. Because if you look at this as I always look at everything as what happened first, I'm not looking at, you know, like a broken leg. I'm looking at right. all the things that happened that caused that person to break their leg. Was it really just an accident or did they have a weakness in the leg? Did they have osteoporosis? I'm going backwards. That's exactly what we're trained to do. We're trained not to just go, oh, knee jerk. Here, take this medicine. Right. That some every once in a while, that's okay. That's that's a good answer. But when people come to me for ED, which almost every male who comes to me for testosterone has ED, that's one of the reasons they're there. Right. Then I go through a com a complete workup as far as I can do it. I look for diabetes. I look for hemochromatosis, which can cause sludging of the blood and and loss of testosterone. But the first thing that happens when ED happens is the loss of testosterone. Then it's like dominoes. It just starts heading down. Your cholesterol goes up. Your inflammation goes up. All of these things cause plaque on your blood vessels. Plaque makes the blood vessel that may have been this big, now this big. If you can't dilate your blood vessels in your pelvis, you can't dilate your blood vessels in your heart. Right. So that's your first sign. So. So we're showing you the future if you don't do anything. Testosterone can help because it does. It lowers cholesterol and it lowers inflammation. So it helps clean out those blood systems right? And to it, make the flow better. Right. It makes the flow better and it improves your nitric oxide. Mm -hmm. Okay, You've heard of that. Nitric oxide is, is a uh, chemical that dilates blood vessels, mm -hmm. okay? So it makes you more sensitive to nitric oxide, it gives you more nitric oxide, and that means you get a, a better erection. Mm -hmm. Now, if we were looking at people right when they got ED, usually they're not gonna have heart disease yet, okay? But if you have ED and you wait and you wait and you wait and you don't do anything about it and you don't take testosterone and you don't fix your diabetes and you don't, you don't do anything about it, then you get to a point, and this is the next step. They come in and they say, "Viagra's not working anymore." That's when they get in trouble. That's when they finally go, "Man, what's there's wrong?" Something else going on, right? That ends up being, "Oh, you've already hit the point of no return," in terms of your vessels are really are really clogged up. So, so that would mean an immediate look at the heart, look at a, and and I like the heart test that tells me whether there's plaque in the heart, which is the cardiac index. It's a CT mm -hmm. scan. It's not paid for by insurance, of course. It's 250 bucks. I had one. You just go in a couple of shots with a, you're just lying there with a CT scanner, one, two. You get a couple of shots of that. They tell you whether you have plaque or not. The treatment, uh, if, you, if you can identify it in your 40s, 50s, 60s, before you reach the point where the ED drugs are not working for you, they the phrase that physicians use is window of curability. Right. There is a time frame where some of this stuff can be reversed and your health can be restored without significant medical intervention or significant medical costs. You just improve the quality of your lifestyle. Mm -hmm. you, you get your blood pressure down, you get your cholesterol down, you lose some weight, uh, you 
get your get arteries your testosterone cleaned out, pack. get your testosterone. Well, but that's like you still the need that event, right? I mean, it would be better if we fixed it first, right? But Which is what you recommend all the time, right? But if I get somebody who who's not there, yeah, <laughs> I'm, I'm not. Yeah, yeah, they they didn't come to me until they got to the point where the Viagra didn't work, and no right. one paid attention to that as a sign of disease, when they get to me where the Viagra doesn't work anymore, then I know really kind of where they are. I just need to prove it. Mm -hmm. But I need to make sure their blood sugar is fine because blood, blood sugar being abnormal makes your small vessels all clogged up and you don't get blood flow. So it's conversation two includes a, which comes first, the chicken or the egg. Mm -hmm. You know, if, if I am on blood pressure medicine because we've already identified that I'm having a blood pressure problem, mm -hmm. but I haven't discovered that I have a testosterone problem mm -hmm. because my doctor doesn't know anything about that. Mm -hmm. So they just put me on a blood pressure mm -hmm. medicine or cholesterol medicine or both. Mm -hmm. Then I start having ED concerns After that. <laughs> because I'm reacting to the medicines they're giving right. me for those things. That's right. And so you have to think about that too. So sometimes you, come, you go in and I always think of when people say, I don't know when my testosterone went down. I mm -hmm. say, well, when did you go on cholesterol medicine? Yeah. Because the minute you're on cholesterol medicine, first of all, your testosterone started going down. You take cholesterol medicine, it makes it go down more. So that, seriously, because testosterone is made out of cholesterol. You, I mean, you need cholesterol. And when you right. take those medicines, you don't make testosterone anymore. So you've just made the problem worse. So it's helping you not get plaque and not have anything to collect on the blood vessels, but other things are going to get worse. It's not going to protect you from the, the other changes and the narrowing of the blood vessels. It's not going to change you, change your nitric oxide levels. It's not going to make you more responsive to um, ED drugs. It's actually going to make the problem worse. And if blood pressure medicine is making your blood pressure so low very low, you can't have an erection with low blood pressure either. Right. I mean, you have to have normal blood pressure. You have to be in that zone, that range. And, and you can still have an erection with high blood pressure, but that's not good for you. And you might have a stroke. Blow your brain and, Yeah, and that's not a good thing. But, I mean, high blood pressure doesn't usually cause ED, but really low blood pressure does. Mm -hmm. So over-medicating blood pressure is not always a good thing either. So we have to look at preventing. I'd love to get people at the very beginning. The minute that their doctor says, you need cholesterol medicine, I'd like to get them next. Before yeah. they get on the cholesterol medicine and say, you need testosterone and check everything else and, and then be preventive. Let's, let's save money in healthcare and save our lives from all this hell we put ourselves through because well, we catch expensive. it first. Right. The medicines are expensive and the side effects are often expensive, difficult. They just keep... You know, you, you take a pill for that, and then you take a pill for this because that causes this. And you have to take mm -hmm. a pill for that because that causes this. And so mm -hmm. all of a sudden, you're taking five medicines mm -hmm. to try to stay in place. Right. And most which, of my patients lose their medicines. They, I mean, well, if they come in when their testosterone is low and before damage has been done, mm -hmm. then we can reverse a lot of this. They lose weight, which helps everything. You went off blood pressure medicine. I, I can attest to that. I, when I came to see you the first time, I had been on blood pressure medicine for 25 years. I had been on cholesterol medicine. I was on an anti-diuretic. I mean, a, a diuretic. diuretic. Uh, and I was 35 pounds overweight. And you had diabetes. And I had diabetes. I, always, I like to forget that in one. In past. <laughs> that was in the past. Because you don't have that anymore. I, I don't have any of those now. And I'm not taking mm -hmm. any of those medicines mm -hmm. at I all. Know. I have no dollar cost for medicines. Since I've come to see you. Which now, is amazing. So you promise that response to everybody. No, I can't promise that to everybody, but you were really compliant and your wife was really good at cooking. She's a she Nazi. Cooked, she <laughs> yeah, well, that's... I have to sneak out yeah. and get M&M's. You can't have M&M's in front of me either. No, no, no. <laughs> so the side so of the you're, road. yeah, <laughs> we're both watching you. So, so, so the deal is, is that... You can be healthier, and a couple yeah. M and M's now and then doesn't bother anybody. Well, I know anybody. We're, we're being silly about that, but but the point is is valid. The point is valid that the I am no longer spending money on treatments for issues that I no longer have, and as a result, I no longer have the side effects. From and it more it more than takes the the cost of the cost of testosterone is much lower. Than, than the, other stuff. the cost of testosterone, the way we do it, is much lower than the cost of all this other stuff. But on top of that, being healthy, 
right. for longer is going to save you all that cost in the nursing home and all that hell for your chil- children. So, you know, so this is huge. I mean, it's not just a, a little thing. If you now know that the how, ED. How many walkers I'll never have to buy is right. a hard cost to calculate. Um, yeah, you're not going to get osteoporosis. You're not yeah. going to get all those things. But but if you think about it, the very first time somebody says, I have ED now, even mm-hmm. young people, young people have well, ED. maybe. Some do. Some do. But No, I see some of them. Sometimes people don't have ED. They don't have erectile problems. They have relationship problems. They have mm-hmm. emotional yeah, problems. Yeah, that's true. They have depression. They're taking antidepressants. Nobody tells them, oh, here's a side effect to that. Mm-hmm. So you do need the full medical workup. You need to talk to your physician, spend a little time with them, have them do the checklist with you, and have them run the blood test to say, what all's going on here? Not just say, well, here, I'll give you a prescription. See if this is any better. Because it'll be better. They'll give you that prescription. And it you'll should get be better. And it'll be like, oh, okay, this is great. But it's not the solution. It's not to fixing the anything. It's a band aid. Yeah, it's not fixing the problem. Exactly. So, what we'd like you to hear from this is we're not trying to scare you or put you into some kind of panic mode, but we want you to hold your doctor accountable and say, I know that ED means I could have right. heart disease in the near future or diabetes currently or. I could be on drugs that are making me have ED, like lisinopril is a drug, a blood pressure medicine right. that actually causes ED. So, and a lot of people are on it. So not everyone yeah. gets ED, but in many cases, if I take somebody off that and put them on Benicar or on um, another medication similar, then they're better. But, but it's interesting because I know how much research you had to do to find a, uh, a blood pressure medicine that didn't cause that side Yeah, effect. there's only two. <laughs> and the doctors that I had gone to previously either had not done that research or ha- didn't have an interest in doing it because they were only solving the immediate problem, which is we're going to keep your blood pressure in this zone, and this is what does mm-hmm. it. And then I would come in and say, well, what about this? I've lost this. And they were like, well, Here, you want to have Viagra. a heart attack? You know? No, they say, here's some Viagra. <laughs> yeah, and so, and, and, in, and then six, eight years down the road, you're looking at your medicine chest going, oh, my God, I have to take all this stuff. Mm-hmm. And, and, and that's what we're, you know, we're trying to avoid that. No one wants to have to go to the pharmacy all the time. No one wants to have to take medicine all the time. Right. If you need it, you have to take it. But if we can catch you early, like in your case, and you're really compliant and you walk every day and you do all these other things, then we can make a huge difference in your future. I mean, you have a young wife. You need to stay healthy for her. So it's going to be, you know, she wants to have you around. Well, yeah. So that's important. I mean, we have. She that, says she does. <laughs> she does. She said, tells me she does, too. So uh, for lots of good reasons. So yeah. in any case, sh- this is something for you to hold your doctor accountable. Make sure you get the workup that you need. And even if you're a young person, make sure they do a total testosterone and a free testosterone. If you're having ED problems, you need to look at that because. Right. Our environment has gotten really co- complicated with all of the different plastics and stuff that ended up getting into yeah. our foods and into our bodies. And that is causing men to have a lower testosterone early, which I would then say is going to eventually cause them to have heart disease early. Mm-hmm. But, and because that of has this actually. research that says there's a four to seven year window of curability. For people in certain age groups, and they just said 40, a delay. Yeah, they said, "Oh, you get ED, you get ED here within four to seven years, you'll have a heart attack right. or a stroke." It's not just you'll have hardening of the arteries; right. you'll have something big, really big. That's and I don't know if you. I mean, you know what a stroke can do. Everybody knows what a stroke can do. You've seen people who are in wheelchairs and and can't walk and and you know they can't talk and and it, it's a horrible thing to have. But you don't know what a heart attack can do. Yeah, you have a heart attack. Everybody goes, oh, yeah, I had a heart attack. Well, that you can't, you're not going to be going skiing in the cold. You're not going to be running. You're not going to be exercising. You're not going to be doing the things you used to do. You're not going to be hiking on vacations. I mean, you're not going to be zip lining like I was doing in Mexico. That changes everything. It changes what you can do physically. Your life becomes more sedentary in most cases. But I have to have this one vignette. I, I, had, I had a patient who came to me after years of testosterone deficiency, and I replaced him. And just by chance, you know, he was overweight, and he had 
high blood pressure. He had a lot of other medications. Just by chance, he did have a heart attack uh, within about six months of starting the testosterone, not because of it, but it was, it was on its way from years before. Right. And when he had his heart attack, he loved the pellet so much because he had started to lose weight and he had started to feel better and he got his brain back and his, he, he got his personality back and his sex life back. So he talked to his cardiologist, who was very, is a very forward-thinking cardiologist, and he said, I want to stay on testosterone pellets because they have made a difference in the quality of my life. And the, and the cardiologist said, you just lost 40% of your heart muscle. He said, if you can improve your quality of life any way, do it. Because right. kind of like, you're, you don't have much time, you don't have much time left is what I read from that. Right. And he said, well, am I going to get that muscle back? And the cardiologist said, no, you're never getting that muscle back, no matter what you do. So guess what? Six months later, on testosterone and doing everything he was supposed to do, doing water aerobics yeah. and all eating protein and not eating, fat, you know, like fat on meat, but eating plenty of protein, not eating sugar. He lost 35 pounds and his muscle is all back. It's all back. The whole, the whole heart has healed. Now that's miraculous. That is miraculous. And it introduces another topic of conversation that we can discuss another day about the importance of being compliant when you're under a doctor's care. You need to do the things. If they tell you you need to lose 10 pounds, you need to do so much exercise, you need to get up and walk around, you really need to give some thought to doing that. If, you if they want tell to you to lose 10 pounds, you need to say how. Yes. Because not that's ha. Not, not ha. Not ha, how. but how. Because it's really unfair for doctors to say lose 10 pounds and walk out of the door. They need to tell you how or help you. Now there's medication to help you lose weight. And, and, and different, I mean, we have a program to lose weight in our office that it builds off of the testosterone because you have to have muscle to help you burn calories. But, but then we add other things that have come through new in medicine, and it works. People lose weight, but they have to be compliant. Yeah, my dad used to try to make a joke about it. He, he knew more old drunks that smoked and were overweight than he knew old doctors. And I told him he was hanging out in the wrong social groups. <laughs> That's true. <laughs> One of the wrong bars. Most of the he didn't, doctors. He didn't like it when I said that to him. And the fact is, I take care of a lot of doctors. Yeah, you do. And they want to stay healthy, <laughs> and too. And they want to stay and healthy, they too. And now and they know where to send their patients. So, to summarize, ED will happen, just like loss of testosterone and aging will happen. When it happens, you can put a Band-Aid on it. You can get an erection if that's the only thing you're looking for. But it should never be the only thing you're looking for. Find out why. Find out what needs to be done. Be an active participant in your own health care. Get your doctor to do a workup because the research clearly shows that ED is a precursor symptom to a heart attack. Four to seven years. Thank you for listening. Thank you. Email your questions or comments to podcast at biobalancehealth.com. You can find the Biobalance HealthCast on iTunes and on YouTube. For more information about bioidentical hormone pellet therapy and other reverse aging solutions, visit biobalancehealth.com or call 314-993-0963. You can find Dr. Maupin on Twitter at Dr. Kathy Maupin and on Facebook at facebook.com slash biobalancehealth. Find Brett Newcomb at brettnewcomb.com.